Precinct was announced about two months ago, and this seems pretty cool. On the surface, it just looks kind of like another PC top-down strategy type thing. This is actually like a really cool sandbox police simulator with a dash of almost old school Grand Theft Auto and an emphasis on car chase. So you're in this fictional 80s city steeped in kind of like a noir thriller type of crime thing. You play as this new rookie cop, but it seems like you're just going to be able to police however you want, whether you want to get into some kind of undercover work, more action shootout stuff, uh, multiple vehicles like different squad cars, even a helicopter. And it's the style, the detail of the city and the cool car chases that that really seem to make this feel a little bit different. If you like LA Noir, but maybe you're looking for something a little bit strategic, uh, we've also seen a lot of people in comments and stuff suggest that this is kind of like a classic GTA game, but you're playing as the police. It's definitely something different. It's got a lot of potential. That PlayStation announced trailer from just a couple of weeks back really impressed us, and we're keeping this one on our radar. Next over at number nine, uh, from an announcement just only like three months ago, we have Phantom Blade Zero. This one, despite having a pretty generic name, seems really sweet. While on the surface, it might look like just kind of like a Souls-like or Neo-style game with a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima, uh, graphically, it is downright shockingly impressive. But the biggest thing here is the combat, which we'll be honest, we're skeptical just because it does look so unique. We actually kind of have a lot of questions with how it goes down. The combat seems really fast and crazy and motion captured, but it almost seems too good to be true. We don't really know how this is going to go down, like how this is going to play from a gameplay sense, but those animations are sweet. And this game looks like it has some really, really cool boss designs. We know that FromSoft style, like FromSoft inspired Souls games are the thing nowadays, but this one looks a little bit different. Way more emphasis on an adventure, some wall running and platforming and like scripted action set pieces. We definitely want to see more of that. The main character looks badass. And if that combat can actually play as cool as it looks on screen here, like again, we're very skeptical at this. We haven't played another game from this studio. This is a totally new thing, which props to that. But if they actually pull it off, Phantom Blade Zero could be really, really awesome. Now, next over at number eight, we have Marathon. Yes, this game is incredibly special because it's Bungie, the creators of Halo, returning to a very, very classic game franchise where, where they really essentially cut their teeth in the early days of PC shooters. This Marathon has an incredible art style from what we've seen from the teaser trailer in May. Uh, it just stylistically looks unlike any other sci-fi game we've seen, and we have to give them props for that. It stands out so much. Now, the only problem is that this Marathon apparently is going to be a sci-fi PvP extraction shooter. Now, extraction shooters are all the rage. Some people really love them. They can be very addictive, but I don't know, me personally, I just wanted to kind of live in a new sci-fi world that Bungie created, but they certainly know how to craft a shooter. Say what you will about Destiny, maybe you're not a fan of that game or the structure, but the guns, the first person shooting, the controls feel great. So Marathon, this new Marathon in 2023 or 2024 or 2025, whenever it releases, can be something really special and distinct in a market of first person shooters and competitive games and extraction shooters that is so crowded. This could be something different. Next over at number seven, we have Delta Force Hawk Ops. Now, this one doesn't look too unique on the surface. It's a operative based free to play multiplayer shooter in kind of like this large scale world. You pick from these special operators, you go out, you do your thing. It does seem like it has a little bit of an emphasis on tactics, but the interesting thing is that this is a return of an old franchise. Delta Force. Delta Force Hawk Ops isn't just some new weird game with a generic name. It's from a lineage of way older shooters from like the mid 90s. And that's pretty cool. It's nice to see that franchise come back. If you were one of the old heads who played the old Delta Force games, this one on the surface might not seem like exactly what you were thinking. But the fact that Delta Force is coming back for some people, that is very cool. And uh, we thought we'd mention it. From like 1998-ish, these games were like at the forefront of those slower tactical shooters for a minute. So if they could bring that style of game back, hell yeah. Next over at number six, we have The First Descendant. Now, this was kind of really released or blown out about a year ago, and more recently, we've gotten more gameplay trailers and big flashy videos and stuff like that. And The First Descendant 
Seems pretty cool. This is a third person co-op action RPG looter shooter. I mean, we were a big fan of Outriders and this kind of seems like it's definitely doing its own thing. And I, I will say co-op action RPG looter shooter is not a unique thing. No, of course. But the reason why we're talking about this game is because like, goddamn, look at it. The level of detail here is incredible. The animations, the particle effects on screen, the character designs. Uh, this is an Unreal Engine 5 game and it looks like it's really flexing the Unreal Engine 5 thing. Like, visually, this game seems to be pretty nuts. The trailer from Gamescom 2023 was pretty awesome and really got some people interested because not only is there like some tight shooting from the looks of it and cool action powers, uh, you're fighting enemies on the ground, but also these big larger than life creatures made out of both metal and earth from what we've seen. Uh, but also there's just a lot of cool navigational stuff going on, running and jumping and parkour, quickly zipping around and up the environment, changing verticality, and of course, a grappling hook. So while yeah, we don't necessarily think the world needs another co-op looter shooter type thing, this one just does look like it has a lot going on and is potentially worth talking about. Next over at number five, we have Star Wars Outlaws. An open world Star Wars game doesn't sound like this unique upcoming thing, but it's worth highlighting that this one is centered specifically around being a bounty hunter. You are not an incredibly awesome Jedi. It is not a Star Wars power fantasy type of thing. You're just kind of this weird, sketchy smuggler criminal girl with a cool alien pet seemingly getting into outer space hijinks and heists and trouble. It's going to be a completely open world thing developed by Ubisoft. And you know, Ubisoft, we have our complaints with how their open world games go down, but for Star Wars, if they create a cool world and a cool vibe we want to live in and really truly experience, then that could be an absolute win. This game stands out because we've been wanting something like Star Wars 1313, where you're kind of playing as a Boba Fett character or really technically actually Boba Fett in that game. It was revealed after it was canceled. Hopefully that game gives us that same feel. I mean, we want to play as a Boba Fett or a Han Solo or a Dash Rendar or a, you know, insert Star Wars person here. Back in the day, there were plenty of games like this, but most recent Star Wars games focus on the other stuff. So Star Wars Outlaws could stand out. Next over at number four, we have Lost Soul Aside. This one's actually been around for a while. It was originally this one person project that really caught people's eye and popped off. But more recently, uh, within this year, Sony announced that it is taking on the publishing duties and this game has really ramped up. The newest trailer from just a couple of months back is pretty awesome. Lost Soul Aside seems special because it's very much a mix of the over the top, awesome characters, graphics, visuals of like a modern Final Fantasy, but with some Devil May Cry style awesome action combat gameplay. Now, we know Final Fantasy 16 technically was kind of what we just said, but before that, Lost Soul Aside seemed like something really special, and frankly, it still does. That combat looks pretty awesome from what we've seen of it. The other thing, of course, is the graphics. The graphics are absolutely stunning. From when this was originally just a small indie project worked on by one guy, visually then it blew us away, and even more so now. Hopefully after so long, we finally get our hands on this one soon because it could be a really pretty gorgeous action slasher combat game that we need. Next over at number three, we have Blight Survival. Look at this game. I haven't really seen another game like this. It's giving Plague Tale vibes, but like you're just this badass medieval knight just fighting your way through a haunted village, killing plague ridden zombies. That just really checks a lot of my boxes. There's a lot of games where you're a knight, there's a lot of games where you kill zombies, but just something about the way this one is presented, the style of it, the kind of filmic look, everything to it just really seems memorable. When the trailer first dropped like eight or nine months ago, we've been thinking about it ever since. This is actually going to be a co-op and quote unquote, action horror roguelite, which to be honest, we're also down if this was just like a cool single player adventure, but it seems like they're really taking this concept and running with it. You're essentially going to be a knight who you can build out with your own weapon and style with or without your friends, who goes into this kind of plague ridden no man's land between warring nations. And then you go out, you do a kind of roguelite extraction run and hopefully not get killed by these plague zombies. It seems gory. It seems kind of realistic and a little bit more slow paced and we're about it. We really, really hope we see more from this one soon. Now, next over at number two, we have RoboCop Rogue City. This one's for me. Yes, Game Ranks let me put RoboCop on this list, and I'm thankful. As the number one RoboCop gaming fan, yes, I have personally appointed myself that title. It's stupid, I don't care. I deem this significant because we haven't seen a real proper RoboCop game in a long time. 
There was like this free to play crappy shooter thing based on the remake movie. Uh, then uh, before that, there were like mobile games. So really technically the last full proper RoboCop game was a first person shooter from 2003 that a lot of people don't remember. It wasn't very good, but hopefully RoboCop Rogue City can turn the tides around from what they've shown off. We don't know for sure, it has been delayed, and my big concern is if it can actually replicate the feel of the original movie like it's really going for, but at the very least, it is from Taeyeon, the developers of Terminator Resistance, which wasn't a perfect game, it was a lower budget, you know, flawed experience, but it felt like it kind of understood Terminator, and out of the last Terminator games, it at least came close, so we're hoping that they can do that and really apply what they've learned with Robocop Rogue City. Again, we don't know for sure, the game could turn out rough. It has been delayed to November, but it was technically announced, revealed like two years ago. But in the last like six to eight months, we've gotten a lot more of the game. So that's why we wanted to mention it. Robocop needs a good video game. It's been a long time. Some people will argue that Robocop's never really had a good game other than the original Nintendo one and Robocop vs. Terminator. But so hopefully this really breaks the streak. Now down at number one, we have Rise of the Ronin, revealed this year during a PlayStation Direct. This seems awesome. This is like Team Ninja taking everything they've learned with Neo and everything else and making a full proper adventure game. The combat seems really over the top and fun and probably challenging knowing their last games like, like Wo Long and Neo and stuff like that. But the adventure that they're telling here seems to be awesome. It's Japan in the 1860s uh, with the West kind of coming over. And you were a lone Ronin engaging in this world, seemingly having some connection to the story and some pretty cool characters that we've seen in the uh, initial trailer, uh, but really it's that gameplay. It's exploring these open environments that look on the surface very quickly, like something like a Ghost of Tsushima or whatever, but the more you see of it and more of the 1800 style building and architecture you see here and there, it just has a bit of a different feel to it. From when the character jumps out and flies over the landscape to some of those quick combat bits, this trailer was short and brief, but it made an impact. We've been thinking about it ever since, and we're really anticipating this one. Team Ninja does a really good job with this stuff, and to see them really take on a full proper adventure with cutscenes and seemingly an open world, this has the potential to be something really awesome and a bit different. But